The Scottish National Party, or SNP, founded in 1934 from several Scottish independence organisations, is an established political party in Britain today. In fact, it's the third largest party in Britain after the Conservatives and Labour. It is also the largest political party in Scotland and has formed a government in the devolved Scottish Parliament. And it also has a large presence in the House of Commons in London. Since 2005, with the declassification of secret government documents, it has come to the attention of historians that the SNP was involved in some questionable activities regarding Nazi Germany before and during World War II. Germany was only too happy to cosy up to any political group that might help undermine Hitler's enemies. The Abwehr, German military intelligence, made large-scale though ultimately futile attempts to enlist the IRA on the Axis side, for example, hoping to destabilise Northern Ireland and undermine the British war effort. With the Scottish nationalists, some attempts were made to make contact with SNP personalities who had made comments or had written things that appeared positive towards Hitler or at the least highly critical of the war and Scotland's place in it. Little was known of the extent of senior SNP politicians' connections to or sympathies with Nazi Germany until, as I mentioned, MI5 security service files were declassified in 2005. They recorded that elements of the SNP were considered, quote, subversives, end quote, in the war, and that measures were taken to silence these nationalists, the government fearful that they might become, or indeed were, a fifth column, acting in the furtherance of their goal of an independent Scotland by trying to undermine the British war effort. The second leader of the Scottish National Party from 1936 to 1940 was a controversial barrister and professor, Andrew Dewar Gibb, he had served in World War I as an officer on the Western Front, and as a major had been adjutant to Winston Churchill, who had gone to the front to serve as lieutenant colonel in the Royal Scots, following his leaving the government over the Dardanelles campaign. In the 1930s, Gibb frequently quoted Hitler in his public speeches. Gibb saw Nazism as a bulwark against the spread of communism, a common enough belief among conservatives and right-wing people in the 1930s. And he also showed what were termed, quote, anti-Semitic anxieties, end quote. Once World War II began, Gibbs backed the British government and later Churchill, who became Prime Minister in May 1940, though he also said, quote, I don't care who wins, end quote. At an SNP meeting in Edinburgh, where he was criticised for such remarks, he said he had, quote, made no secret of my distinct fascist leanings, end quote. He resigned from the leadership in 1940, as he considered the party had lurched to the left, and he was replaced by William Power. Power, who had previously argued that overthrowing Hitler was, quote, not legitimate, end quote, was also a controversial character. However, during this wartime phase of the SNP's history, another character managed to bring upon himself and the party the full force of the British state due to his statements about the war and the Nazis. Arthur Donaldson joined the SNP in 1934. A chicken farmer, in May 1941, his home was raided by police. Donaldson and several other SNP politicians were involved with an organisation called the Scottish Neutrality League, which was against Scotland's involvement in war with Nazi Germany. MI5 viewed this organisation as subversive and investigated further. Witnesses repeated Donaldson's numerous remarks, including a proposal Donaldson had made to the Germans for an alliance. Donaldson was reported to have said that in the event of a German invasion, he would help them create a collaborationist government in Scotland, modelled on that of Vidkun Quisling in German-occupied Norway, with Donaldson naturally as leader. Arrested by police in May 1941 as a potential fifth columnist, his home was raided a second time by police. This time they found five revolvers and ammunition, material from various fascist organisations, and most interestingly, the copy of a letter to Dr. Gerhard von Tevener, a known German agent. Declassified documents reveal that Donaldson told MI5 that England would be, quote, completely crushed, end quote, by Hitler, and Scotland should make a separate peace. 
During the war, British codebreakers intercepted confidential communications between the German legation in Dublin, Ireland, and Joachim von Ribbentrop's foreign office in Berlin that had noted in a memorandum a group called the Scottish Independent Movement, basically a reference to the SMP, the memo noting the proposal for an alliance between it and Nazi Germany against, quote, the gross materialism of the capitalistic communistic union of English, Americans, Bolsheviks, etc., end quote. Arthur Donaldson was sent to Barlini Prison in Glasgow for six weeks whilst the government tried to build a case against him, but insufficient evidence was available for them to win a conviction, and they reluctantly released him. The problem was probably that MI5 didn't want to admit in open court that it had penetrated German diplomatic traffic, and the other offences were fairly minor. Following his release from prison, Donaldson did not tone down his contentious views concerning Nazi Germany. In a pamphlet he wrote, he outlined three outcomes for England in the war, defeat, victory or negotiated settlement. He believed any of these outcomes would leave Scotland in a better position than before the war. Despite a large question mark hanging over Donaldson regarding his comments about Nazi Germany, he remained an SNP member, becoming a leading figure alongside another SNP personality named Robert McIntyre, often called the father of the SNP. McIntyre would be SNP leader from 1947 to 1956, and Arthur Donaldson himself was elected leader from 1960 to 1969. He died in 1993, aged 91, still active in SNP politics. Returning to the World War II period, SNP leader William Power was replaced by another controversial Scottish nationalist named Douglas Young, who became party leader in 1942. Young was completely opposed to British involvement in World War II, or more specifically, Scottish involvement. He famously said, quote, The SNP must not be thurled to democracy in case democracy should be the wrong camp. End quote. He led a campaign against conscription on the grounds that the government in London had no legal right to order young Scots into battle. A conscientious objector himself, who refused to fight, he was arrested and tried under the National Service Armed Forces Act 1939 in April 1942 and imprisoned. Released a few months later, he stood for election as an SNP candidate, but in June 1944 was arrested again and charged under the defence regulations, and he was again jailed. He was replaced as party leader in 1945. It is certainly clear that some senior SNP figures saw German victory over Britain as a desirable outcome to help advance Scottish independence. All of this proved a little embarrassing to the SNP leadership in 2005 when these documents were declassified, and what occurred in World War II continues to be quite controversial regarding the SNP, the modern leaders naturally being keen to play down any associations between the historic SNP and Nazi Germany. Nevertheless, such sentiments as expressed at the time, and the writings and various other things that these leaders got up to, are a matter of historical fact. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my video channel, Mark Felton Productions. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.